brought to you by the United States Tennis Association, the national governing body of tennis. For defending champion John McEnroe and Israel's Slomo Glickstein, the first day of the 1985 U.S. Open has enough drama and excitement to be the last. After easily winning the first set, McEnroe suddenly sees that a possible six Open title might be out of reach. Glickstein's tiebreak win in the second set and 6-2 win in the third put him on the doorstep of a monumental upset. But in the fourth set, the heavily favored McEnroe begins to show the form that makes him the tournament's number one seed. Then down a break in the final set, McEnroe rallies to force a tiebreaker and finally a match point. After teetering on the brink of extinction, McEnroe survives to play another day in the 1985 U.S. Open. In recent years, the U.S. Open at Flushing Meadows has attracted record numbers of fans. So it's no surprise that on the first few days of the 1985 tournament, the stands are once again filled with people eager to watch two weeks of unparalleled tennis. What does come as a surprise, though, is a torrential rainstorm that wreaks havoc on the grounds and postpones play on the first Friday of the tournament. Spirits, however, aren't dampened by the deluge. There's still plenty of tennis left to be played and plenty of stars left to play it, including a fresh new face at Flushing Meadows, 17-year-old Boris Becker of West Germany, whose play has even impressed Rod Laver. Oh, I think Boris is a great player. He's, uh breath of fresh air, I believe, for the, uh, for the world of tennis. He plays an attractive game. He gets to the net, volleys, he smashes, good serve. He's prepared to make some mistakes just because he likes the, uh, the game so much. I feel he's, uh, he's got tremendous potential. Barely a summer removed from his historic Wimbledon victory, Becker is given a chance to win here too, but in his way is McEnroe. But I don't really have anything to gain by beating him. I mean, the guy's 17 years old. I mean, it looks... Uh, Looks bad for everyone if a guy like this that age can come on and just completely take everyone by storm. Becker's much anticipated meeting with McEnroe is to come in the tournament's quarterfinals. But in the round of 16, Boris must first get by Sweden's Joachim Nyström, the tournament's number 10 seed. <laughs> Nyström breezes through the first two sets, 6-3 and 6-4. But the aggressive Becker keeps himself in the match by winning the next set, 6-4. But unlike Wimbledon, where he beat Nystrom in five sets, Becker will have no youthful magic today. Overcoming Boris's adventurous style of play, the cool and collected Nystrom hangs on to send Becker home, delaying his meeting with McEnroe till another day. With Becker now out of the tournament, Attention is focused on Jaime Izaga of Peru, another 17-year-old who reaches the round of 16. In his path to the quarterfinals is Ivan Lindel, whom Izaga beats in the first set. But ultimately, Lindel proves to be too strong for Izaga and takes the surprisingly close match in four sets. In the quarterfinals, Yannick Noah of France is Lindel's opponent and Yvonne neatly puts him away in three sets. Jimmy Connors moves into the semifinals along with Lindel by beating Heinz Gunthardt of Switzerland, who fails to win a set against the perennial crowd favorite. In the other half of the draw, Nystrom falls to the top-seeded McEnroe, who then moves on to the semis, where he'll face the number three seed, Mats Vilander of Sweden. In the women's quarters, Claudia Cota Kilch proves to be no match for the tournament's number one seed as Chris Everett Lloyd beats the West German in straight sets. Chris's semifinal foe will be Hanuman Lakova, who narrowly beats fellow Czech Helena Sukova 7 6 and 7 5. The other half of the draw finds 16 year old Steffi Graf of West Germany upsetting fourth seeded Pam Shriver in three tiebreaker sets. In the other quarterfinals, 
A confident but cautious Martina Navratilova easily eliminates six-seeded Zena Garrison, 6-2 and 6-3. I don't underestimate anybody out there, and uh, if I ever do, uh, as soon as they break my serve or, or do something special, I come right back to reality and, and uh, you know, I'm back to normal. Normal for Navratilova is a spot in the semifinals, where Steffi Graf is her opponent. Normal, too, is an easy match, and today is no different. Facing the 11th seeded Steffi Graf for the first time in her career, Martina wins the first set handily 6 2. Graf is playing in the semifinals of a Grand Slam event for the first time, and Martina's vast experience and powerful game are just too much for the 16 year old to overcome. For Graf, the end will come just 52 short minutes after the beginning. For Martina, the win will take her into the finals, where she'll defend her 1984 Open title and stake a claim for number one against the winner of the other semifinal round match between Chris Everett Lloyd and Hanna Mondlikova. I think uh, this tournament, if Chris or I win it, pretty much will decide the number one ranking. I still have an edge for against Chris this year head to head, but uh, Hannah has been playing better and she seems to be really confident. And uh, I think she's got her goal set and uh, it'll, I think it'll be a close match. Not only is Martina a champion, she proves to be a prophet as well. Right from the start, it's apparent that Chris and Hannah are destined to fight a long and close battle. After losing the first two games, Chris comes back to win the next four. Then up a break, she goes on to hold her service twice and close out the first set, 6-4. But Manlikova comes back strong in the second set. Displaying her usually aggressive style, Hanna begins to put pressure on Chris. And when Chris becomes the aggressor herself, Hannah is equal to the task. Towards the end of the set, Everett Lloyd begins to struggle a bit on her serve. Earlier in the sixth game, she double faulted on break point. Now in the eighth game, an uncharacteristically patient Hannah is threatening to break her again. Monlikova wins four games in a row and goes on to even the match at one set apiece. The third and final set starts off with Monlikova winning three of the first four games to take an early lead. Then up three games to two, Hanna breaks Chris again, this time in a marathon game that lasts 26 points. Two games later, Hanna is two points away from achieving her biggest victory at the U.S. Open. At match point, Everett Lloyd must now face one of the hardest serves in women's tennis. Chris's 13th straight trip to the Open semifinals proves to be an unlucky one as Manlikova moves into the finals against Navratilova. But despite her masterful performance, Hanna still has her disbelievers. I think Martina will beat her. Um, Hanna's going to have to play better. She really is going to have to play better and, and cut down on the errors. She still made a few too many errors for Martina. Playing against Martina is another very tough match for me. and. Uh... I just have to change my uh, tactics, you know, I just have to really serve and come in and be at the net earlier than she is. In the first five games of the women's final, Hanna's plan seems to work to perfection. Displaying a powerful game of her own to combat Martinez, Hanna runs roughshod over the defending champion. Early on, the thoroughly confused Martina is no match for Hanna, a woman without answer. In 17 astonishing minutes, Hanna slashes her way to a five to nothing lead, leading Martina to wonder whether or not she'll ever get a grip on her game. But just when it looks like the first set is lost, Martina mounts a comeback. Hanna suddenly finds the tables turned as Martina takes to the offensive and wins the next three games.
Still up five games to three, Monlakova is serving for the set. But Navratilova is on a roll, and she closes the gap to five to four. With her confidence slipping away, Anna is once again in trouble two games later with the score five all. Navratilova's running forehand down the line gives her a break point, but Hanna rallies to take the advantage and finally her elusive sixth game after losing five straight. In the tiebreaker that follows, Hanna falls behind early when Martina breaks her serve to take a 2-1 lead. But there's no quit in Hanna today. Once again, charging the net aggressively like she did early in the match, Monlikova's exquisite cross-court volley evens the tiebreaker at two. Then after Martina wins a point on her serve, it's time for Hanna to break back. The first of four consecutive points gives Hanna a set point on Martina's serve. This time, Hanna doesn't falter. She wins the tiebreaker 7-3 and takes the first set 7-6. But the second set belongs to the defending champion. After staying on serve for the first three games, Navratilova breaks Hanna in game four to take a 3-1 lead. Two games later, Hanna is serving to stay in the set. But Martina's charge is relentless, and she breaks Monlakova again. Set point is a mere formality as Navratilova runs off five games in a row to win the second set 6-1. The third set starts out with the same display of extraordinary skill and shot making that marked the first two, as both women stay on serve for seven games. Then up four games to three with Martina serving, Hanna unleashes a wickedly successful forehand return for a break. All Monlikova has to do now is hold serve and the open is hers. But Martina stubbornly refuses to relinquish her title without a fight and breaks right back. And so these two champions have battled to a third set tiebreaker to determine this year's open champion. After losing the first two points, Martina gamely rushes the net in an attempt to stay in the match. But Hanna coolly passes her to take a 3-0 lead. A few moments later, Martina's championship reign is in jeopardy as Hanna prepares to serve for the championship. Finally, it's hers. On her third trip to the U.S. Open Finals, Hanna Monlikova has come away a winner. In a match that included both athleticism and artistry of the highest order, the 23-year-old Monlikova has enlightened the tennis world. Not only has Hanna overcome her history of erratic play, she's also managed to beat the world's top two women on successive days. Today, there's disappointment for a past champion, but elation for a new one. Hanna Mondlikova, the first European woman to win the U.S. Open since the tournament found its home at Flushing Meadows. Unfortunately for Martina, her luck doesn't get any better in doubles. Although she and partner Pam Shriver are the tournament's number one seeds, they are upset in the finals by the eighth-seeded team of Claudia Kota Kilch and Helena Sokova in three sets. Men's doubles, though, runs true to form. In the early going, the 12th seeded team of Frenchman Henri Leconte and Yannick Noah give the top seeded team of Americans Ken Flack and Robert Seguso all they can handle. But after a controversial win in the third set tiebreaker, Flack and Seguso close out the fourth set at Love to take their first U.S. Open doubles title. In mixed doubles, Martina rebounds and wins the title with Heinz Gunthardt, while the junior boys' title goes to Tim Trigrero of the United States, and the junior girls is won by Laura Garone of Italy. In the high-pressure world of professional tennis, 
There isn't much room for mistakes. No part of the game or the equipment is taken for granted. But is there really anything to account for some of those on the court antics? What do you think of the conditions today with uh, with the wind and the way it was swirling? Is this your new job? Or, uh, this is my new job right here. <laughs> Those antics might ease the pressure, but there's no relief from the heat on the day of the men's semifinals. And for tournament favorite John McEnroe, there's no relief from Mats Vilander either. On a day that's better suited for watching tennis than playing it, McEnroe would like to get this high noon match done in a hurry. But the steady and consistent Vilander is more than willing to take his time especially after he uses his tactics successfully and wins the first set, 6-3. But in the second set, Belander's luck begins to change as McEnroe attacks successfully and takes the set, 6-4. In the next set, McEnroe continues his aggressive play as he takes control of the net and the match. But John soon finds out that Mats can play the same game. Taking advantage of his unexpected rush to the net, Belander catches McEnroe off guard and breaks John's serve in the fifth game. A few games later, Mats is serving for the set. With that passing shot, the third seeded Belander has taken a two sets to one lead. But Mats' elation is short lived when McEnroe overcomes an early break in the fourth set and rallies to even the match. At the outset of the fifth set, Belander breaks McEnroe again to take a two games to love lead. But McEnroe remains calm and his patience pays off when he breaks Belander at love in the next game. In his next service game, Villander is in danger of being broken again. Another break for McEnroe, who now leads three games to two. Three games later, Motts tries to save a match point, but McEnroe's play is too relentless. After three hours and 49 minutes in the broiling sun, John McEnroe has made it to the finals once again. This was really a up and down type match. Matt's, uh Played as well as about I've seen him on this type of court. You know, he served and volleyed really effectively and just kept me off guard, made me work work hard for everything. And on every changeover, I was pouring water on my head and uh, all over my body just to try to cool it off. Uh, I was really lucky to come back and be able to win. But Jimmy Connors is unlucky. A sprained ankle suffered in practice just before his semifinal match with Yvonne Lindell could mean disaster. <laughs> And early on, it's apparent that the injury is hampering Jimmy's mobility. But an injured ankle is not all that Connors is suffering from. There's also the matter of Lindell's dominating game. Yvonne breezes through the first two sets, 6-2 and 6-3, and has Connors reeling again in the third. So far in the tournament, Lindell has played as well as he ever has lost only one set. But Jimmy Connors hasn't come this far to lose without putting up a fight. And he attempts to get back into the match. This is a night, however, that will belong to Lindell. Taking advantage of his powerful serve, Lindell finishes off Connors in straight sets and moves into the finals where he'll face McEnroe for the second year in a row. I feel I was playing uh, good today. I was very happy with the way I was hitting the ball, with the way I was moving, and uh, 
basically I just uh, was enjoying myself out there very much and uh, it's always pleasant to play that way. If I can do it tomorrow, I would, uh, I would love it. I don't think there is any pressure on me. I mean, McEnroe is number one seed. He is the defending champion. He has beaten me last two times on the same surface. You know, I can only gain. I have nothing to lose. On the day of the men's final, the fans have nothing to lose either. Today, they've come from all over the New York metropolitan area to witness the culmination of two weeks of outstanding tennis in what has become a truly international event. <laughs> As the finals begin, Lendl finds himself down a break early, but Ivan steadily mounts a comeback as he tries to win his first open title in his fourth consecutive year in the finals. McEnroe's advantage comes in the form of his five previous open titles, but after missing an earlier opportunity to serve out the first set, John now has to fight back to force a tiebreaker. Unfortunately for McEnroe, it's a tiebreaker that Lindell dominates immediately as he takes a 4-1 lead. Then up 5-1, Lindell's overpowering serve and volley game is too much for McEnroe to handle. On set point, McEnroe can do no more than watch as Lindell's perfectly placed backhand falls for a winner. For McEnroe, the second set begins on an ominous note as Lindell breaks right away to go up too low. Today, Lindell is playing superb tennis, and it seems that John can do nothing to slow down Yvonne's relentless march to his first open title. In Lindell's five service games in the second set, McEnroe manages to get only three points as Yvonne closes out the set 6-3. Lindell is now just one set away from the biggest victory of his career. He knows, though, that McEnroe won't let him have it without a fight. And to overcome that, Yvonne continues his devastating play. Never before has Lindell's game been so sharp. The shots that McEnroe normally puts past opponents are today well within Lindell's reach. All Yvonne needs now is to break McEnroe's serve once more. And he makes a move towards that in the ninth game of the third set. But John refuses to give in to the charging Lindell. Down 15-40, McEnroe saves the crucial break point. A confident Lindell knows that McEnroe's spirit could very well be broken for good on this point. And he's ready to pull out all the stops including a masterful lob to break John and go up five games to four. The only thing left for Lindell now is to serve out the match. And once again, Yvonne has the answer for an attacking McEnroe. For the defending champion, the time has come to relinquish the title as Lindell serves for the championship. On a day when Yvonne Lindell could do almost nothing wrong, he has finally achieved his dream. After coming so close the last three years, he has won the tournament he wanted to win more than any other, the U.S. Open. Like his compatriot Hanuman Lakota before him, Lindell has become the first foreign male to win at Flushing Meadows. And he did it by overwhelming his personal nemesis in a performance that must rank as one of the greatest ever seen on the stadium court at the U.S. Open.